Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. We'll start the timer and we're going to cover a pretty large topic in this video, and it's the types of harmonic motion. And I'm just going to put types of motion. And when we're talking about harmonic motion, we're talking about how voices move from one chord to the next chord. And we're going to use two voices to show examples here, and I'm going to start over here. There's five types of motion, by the way. And this first type is actually sort of an oxymoron because it's actually absent of motion. And this is considered static here. I, I was about to say static movement, but there's no such thing. Static means staying the same. So notice that those two voices from chord to chord are staying in exactly the same place. That's considered static. And static is not necessarily a problem unless it happens a few chords in a row because then it gets a little bit stale and, and boring. So now the next motion that we're going to talk about is uh, let's cover parallel motion because I want to make the distinction between parallel and static sometimes easily confused with each other so there we go these are two voices that are moving parallel with each other and parallel actually if you if you know what the term parallel means the lines that are connecting these notes from voice to voice or, or from uh, chord to chord should be parallel lines like if I go like this and this it creates parallel lines. Parallel motion is when two voices move the same direction in the same distance. And I'm talking about generic distance, the distance on the staff. Because uh, you might notice here that we have a minor third from A to C moving to a major third from G to B, but it's still considered parallel because of how far they're moving on the staff. Now, static is sometimes confused with parallel because we, we could see those parallel lines that are created by that, uh, that static placement of those notes. But static is not parallel, and that's very important to, uh, to note when we get into forbidden parallels, which we will get to soon. Next is similar motion. Now, similar motion is when voices move in a similar direction but a different distance. So here's an example of similar motion. So notice we have A and C, and that's a third, and that's moving into a fourth with the B and the F there, but they're both moving the same direction. So we have similar motion, but it's not parallel. So make sure we make the distinction between those two. And then I'm going to go down to the lower staves here to show the last two. And I'll use the same two starting pitches, and we'll go like this. This is contrary motion. Contrary motion move contrary to each other. So one's moving up and one is moving down. And by the way, any of these can be in any direction. Like parallel motion can be up or down. Similar can be up or down. Contrary can be moving away from each other or moving towards each other, just as long as they're actually contrary to each other. And the last type of motion is what's known as oblique motion. And with oblique motion, oblique one voice remains the same or in the same place and the other moves and it can move away or towards the other voice which is remaining uh, remaining static and this is all five of our types of motion the um, there is a hierarchy here of strong to weak the strongest type of motion is actually contrary motion because contrary motion makes things interesting and usually will help to alleviate some uh, some common errors the others are not bad. Similar motion is quite good, actually, and parallel motion can be good, but you'll see in a video soon to come, one of the major errors that you learn about in the first semester of music theory is about forbidden parallels, and it has to do specifically with parallel motion. Oblique's pretty good, too, but we do have a voice that's remaining the same. So you want things to be moving, but not moving too far, and contrary motion is really the, the best way uh, the best way to move. So if you ever can move voices in contrary motion, then do so. And when we get into um, some major part writing, you'll see how that how that really works. So that's it. Just a quick overview or a quick uh, summary, I guess, of these five types of motion. There's the one that's absent of motion, static. Parallel moves the same direction in the same uh, the same distance on the staff. And similar motion moves the same direction, different distances. Contrary moves opposite of each other, towards or away from, and oblique is one voice remaining the same and the other one moving either away or towards. Thank you.